You're a dirty boy, aren't you? You need a bath, yes you do. Hi, in today's video, I wanted to show you how to wash your standard poodle at home. This is Oasis, he's really dirty. He's been out running and rolling around on the grass and he needs a bath. So the best thing to do for your dog is to exercise your dog before you bathe him. Let him run, let him play, and let him go to the washroom as well. Let him relieve themselves so they're a little bit more comfortable before you bathe them. Now you can get one of these uh, tub ties, they're called tub ties, just like a, a little um, grooming loop that attaches to your tiles. But this one has an eye hook that's drilled into my tiles and you don't want to go that far to ruin your tiles at home. You can get one um, that actually comes with a suction cup and it sticks to the wall or it'll stick to the bottom of your tub. It's just instead of making a hole in your wall, it's a suction cup and um, you can do that especially if your dog's trying to get away or if you don't have help and it just keeps them there so they don't jump out especially when they're soaking wet and running around your house make sure you have a rubber mat in the bathtub and any surface where you're grooming your dog just so they don't slide around has it will make it a, a not so good experience and you want them to enjoy it and not be frightened so for shampoo you want to get a dog shampoo. You don't want to use human shampoo as our pH level is different than the dog's skin pH level. Our skin pH level is between 6.2 to 7.4 while a dog's is between 5.5 to 5.6. So, so it could cause skin irritations if you, you were to use human shampoo. So it's best to get a shampoo that's actually made for dogs. Now just read the shampoo um, you know on the back of the bottle what it says because some shampoos do have to be diluted now as a groomer I buy my shampoos in the gallons and it's concentrated so I do have to mix it with water so I do have an empty jar here which I'm going to mix uh, my shampoo with but some shampoos you can just use straight from the bottle so I just add in some concentrate into this empty bottle and I just put uh, warm water in the rest of the bottle and shake it up. Having a funnel is a good idea when you want to fill up your shampoo if you're using the concentrated shampoo. Now water wise you just want to use water that um, is not too cold and not too hot. You want to use like water that feels lukewarm just right just in the middle between hot and cold. You don't want it too hot, it'll make your dog um, very uncomfortable and too cold, it'll make them shiver. So it's not like when we take a shower, we use hot, hot water, we enjoy it. Dogs don't enjoy that at all. So you just want it lukewarm and, um, you know, just so you don't make the, the bathing experience more upsetting for your dog. So I just fill that up there. Oops, sorry about the noise. And I just got to put my lid on. And then the concentrate is at the bottom. And what I do is I just shake it up. So that's if you got a concentrated shampoo. And it'll tell you how much to mix it with, but um, I just use my own judgment. I don't really feel, you know, follow the exact uh, measurements on the container. I just put in what I feel, um, what I like to use. And if you just got a regular bottle shampoo that doesn't say to mix with water, just use it right out of the bottle. So I'll show you the two ways that you can use your shampoo. All right, so if you're just you're gonna use the shampoo that's right out of the bottle, you're just gonna wet their coat first. Now there's no need to fill up a bathtub with water. You're just gonna give them a shower like that we have. You you just wanna uh, wet down their fur and um, make sure it's you know pretty wet to the skin. And then you're gonna add your shampoo. You can use it right from the bottle. I'm just gonna use what I have because I'm not gonna use that shampoo. But so I'm just gonna use it. You know, concentrate shampoo. The fur is already wet and then you're gonna add your shampoo like that. So there's two ways um, you can bathe your dog. Either wet them all down first, then add the concentrated shampoo, or mix your concentrated shampoo with water and just apply it to the fur. All right, so now I'm gonna bathe them. I'm gonna just bathe them um, by just adding this shampoo on his fur. And basically, you know, you can start on behind his uh, neck here, behind the skull. You can work your way down and basically what you can do is just kind of just kind of pour the shampoo all over him 
and then use your hands to rub it in. And make sure to do the tail and you have to lift the tail and get under there. So yes, you have to clean the <laughs> private areas of your dog. And if it's a female, you gotta get right underneath there. Even if it's a male, you gotta get right in between his legs and also under the belly. So when you're washing the tail, you can just kind of go down the tail like this. And depending on how long the hair is, you can kind of rub it together like that and then once all the soap is on your dog you can really really rub it in give them a good scrubbing really want to get your dog squeaky clean now you just want to wet down the legs you can just you know squeeze on the shampoo while your hands are you know rubbing the coat and you're working up a nice lather. Now, make sure you get the feet. They're the dirtiest, right? And you wanna give them a good rubbing. And when you're doing the feet, you wanna get right in the pads. And <laughs> sometimes it's ticklish, they'll pull away. And the nails and the nail bed. You wanna get between each toe. I know that tickles, doesn't it? Now my feet are ticklish too. So you really want to clean the feet underneath because this is one of the most dirtiest part of your dog. So really give them a good scrubbing and the bottom of the legs are the dirtiest as well as they're running through you know the grass and mud and and whatnot right. So really want to scrub up the hock, the lower legs, the feet, give them a good scrubbing. also make sure you wash underneath you have to get your hands in there and you have to get it clean right there's no shame it needs to be clean you can't leave it dirty so just wet it like that and there you go you're cleaning All right, so once you've washed the body, you gotta wash the head, right? A lot of dogs don't like that, but um, just make sure you don't get it, any shampoo in the eyes and in the nostrils and in the mouth, as this obviously not, doesn't taste good. So what I like to do is, um, well, you can start with the ears if you like, or the head, depends on your dog. If your dog doesn't like the top of his head washed, then you can start with the ears. So I'm just gonna pour some shampoo once again, when you do the ears, you can flip the ears over. Make sure you get the insides of the ears. And you don't want to get shampoo inside the ear holes. You can put cotton in there. Just fill it up with cotton. I didn't put any because I've been grooming dogs for years and I really don't get any water in there. But if you're just learning and just doing it for the first time, it's best to put cotton in their ears so you don't get any shampoo inside the actual ear hole. His ear is dirty on the side I can see. Yeah, so then again, just scrub it up. And if it doesn't scrub up too much, you can just add a little bit of water. Because he's got actually more hair here. And I find the more hair they have, the more shampoo you need, the more water. And you might have to hold them still. Just hold their nose, right? And you want to wash right between their eyes. Okay, 
use your thumb and make sure your nails aren't too long. You don't want to have these long nails and then you poke the dog in the eye. My nails are always pretty short because I'm a dog groomer. I don't want to injure the dog or scratch them. So you always got to be careful, you know, with your nails, make sure they're filed and they don't have any sharp points on them. I'm just adding a little bit of water. Now when washing their face, they have, um, right below here on their bottom lip, they have like, like it folds in right here. It's just a fold in the actual, you know, lip. And see how that's dirtier here? It's always dirty and sometimes some dogs have a buildup of food or just, just, you know, saliva or whatever. And some dogs can even have an infection there. That part gets infected. So you really want to make sure that you uh, get in there, add some shampoo and look. And you can just stretch the skin here with your other thumb, right? And clean that really good. And do it on both sides, of course. Just use your thumb. And if there's hard crusties in there, like sometimes there's hard crusties, just wet it and keep working at it. And it'll soften up as it gets, you know, wet, full of water or shampoo. And I can feel some crusties in there. Just try to avoid getting the shampoo in the mouth. If you do, just take your water and just rinse it quickly. You don't want your dog to swallow the shampoo. So now I'm just going to scrub those ears. I know you don't like it. And what I do is I put one palm on top, one palm on the bottom, and just kind of scrub them together. You don't want to mess it around like really bad because you'll cause a big knot. So I'm just kind of rub them together and you can go down like this. If you start doing these big circles, like you're gonna take up the hair and roll it around, it'll cause a big uh, knot possibly. And when you're here on the face, you can just do under the neck as well and do the other ear. Do the rest of the face. I like to hold the nose and I use my fingers and then I use my thumb right here and under the eyes and above the eyes as well. Most dogs will close their eyes, which is good. Now remember the body is still soaked up. So I like to wash the body first and then the head because you want to wash the head and then be able to rinse it off, especially the face. Because if you do the head first and the face and leave all that shampoo on them, they're going to start licking away licking away so i like to wash the face i mean you could do the face and the head first and then just rinse it off but i like to do it this way there's no real order you know you do what's best for you and your dog but if you do wash the face first rinse it don't let the shampoo you know sit there until you do the body so right now his eyes are closed you can get water in your eyes the water is not going to hurt at all and clean water in the ears won't hurt. It's dirty water. If you get dirty water in the ears, that may bother your dog's ears and they can possibly get ear infections. So I'm just washing, rinsing the ears downwards. The ears are hanging down. But when I do the inside though, I'll use my hands. So when I rinse the other side of the ears, I just use my hands. I know he's not showing you. Turn around. You can actually put your thumb here. And that way the water won't go in. And you want to rinse all that. And you'll have cotton balls in there as well. Now don't forget the chest as well. You want to wash the chest. And you want to make sure you get under the underarms as well. When you were doing the front legs there, you want to get all the way under the armpits. And uh, on the neck, you want to make sure you get every inch of your dog. I know, do you like that? Yeah. Nice and clean, huh? Nice and clean. All right, and now it's time to rinse the rest of your dog. You can start at the top here. Make sure everything's rinsed really well. I like to start up the top and go along the back. 
and then just work your way all the way down. You want to make sure you get out all the soap. For the tail, you want to be able to hold the tail. Otherwise, it'll be moving around everywhere. Lift the tail up. Sometimes they have uh, some dried up poop there. You want to be able to get that off. You can use a small comb. And uh, make sure you scrub under there really good or, you know, it won't smell very good. <laughs> you want to get rid of that smell on their uh, butt. I know you don't like it, huh? But it got to be done, you're dirty. And when you're doing your final rinse, you want to use your hands. You can just kind of, you know, like kind of, uh, what is this, like wiping it off. And you can feel, you can feel if there's any more uh, shampoo on your dog. And once it's all nice and rinsed, you might even be able to hear a squeak. Let's hear if there's a squeak in the fur. Oh wait for this to stop dropping. Okay, sometimes it'll squeak. Did you hear that? That's... That's clean. That's a clean boy! And for the legs, you can do the same thing. Just use your hands. Make sure you get under the armpits, under the belly, and under the groin. You don't want to leave any soap, as that can make your dog very itchy. Make sure you wash under the feet for a rinse. You want to rinse the toes and under the pads as well. Rinse, 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 rinse everything. And always just double check with your hands and do the squeaky test. Now once you wash your dog once, you can actually wash him twice if he's really dirty. Uh, some dogs I wash twice and the second bath will be a little bit quicker than the first bath because they're kind of already clean and it just makes the coat um, more softer, more nice and more manageable for you to brush it and comb it. So what I do is I just give them a quick uh, bath and then rinse it off again. So the second bath will just be a lot quicker. As you can see the shampoo will spread faster and because they're already clean the shampoo's already kind of done its job. You're just doing a nice uh, quick second bath and it just makes their coat a lot nicer. You don't have to especially if your dog does not like um, to be bathed or shampooed. You don't have to do it but I find it makes this sh the, the drying quicker. They dry faster and the clipping looks nice as well. And you can see um, they can move pretty quickly. They can move pretty quickly and I've already washed his body, his legs and his toes. You really don't have to scrub it as much as you did the first time. It could be done in like a few minutes. It's just taking me a little longer because I'm filming. But you get the picture, right? So you can just give them a quick scrub and it will be done a second time. There, you can see how fast that second shampoo was. And then again, I'm just, just gonna rinse him off one more time. Just gonna make sure he's thoroughly rinsed. I do find that the second time, um, it actually rinses off a lot uh, quicker as well.
Now that your dogs are all clean, now I did wash the other side, I just want, want to show it because it would be too long. Um, you want to be able to dry your dog. Um, the best thing I would suggest if you have one is a chamois. Chamois will soak up a lot of water. And before you use a towel, you can just use your hand to scrape off any of the water. And But if you got a chamois or you want to get a chamois, it's the best thing that you can use for dogs. Almost like kind of like drying your car. And if you don't have a chamois, just a regular towel will help. You want to get a few towels and you just want to you know, rub it on your dog and make them all get off all the um, dripping water and uh, get them as dry as you can. So I usually use the chamois first and then I take my towel and I place it around my dog and then I dry them and I get a few more towels until they're you know really dry and then I'll start to blow dry them. Alright, so once your dog is pretty much towel dried, you can even uh, blow dry them with your own dryer on low. You don't want to use hot air or too cold. And get your slicker brush. You should always own brushes when you have a dog. A good slicker brush and a comb. And what you do to get them fluffy is the secret is to brush them and blow dry them at the same time. Unless you have a high velocity dog dryer, which I'm going to be using for him to dry. Um, you don't really need to brush them at the same time, but you want to hold the brush in one hand while you have your blow dryer in the other hand and brush and brush until it's dry and you'll see it coming all nice and fluffy. Now if your dog has a lot of knots in the coat, you might want to use a detangler. This is a really good one that I use. It's a leave-in detangler and it's a finish, finish and spray as well. Even if your dog doesn't have knots, you can use it. And, or you can, if there's no knots, you can use this, uh, what I use sometimes, 3D volumizing spray. It just gives them a nice, like plush looking, more fluffy, more volume. You can use this well. And you know, if your dog is, is pelted and um, it really needs a really good grooming, you might not want to even bathe your dog. You might want to wait to go to the groomers. Um, his coat is short. So basically this is, uh, he's in good shape. If your dog is matted, it might be a totally different experience for you, for the dog to be washing and to get out all those knots. But um, there's options. And also, the shampoo that I used is a conditioning shampoo, so I didn't use any conditioner. But this is basically a, um, a nice finishing spray that kind of acts like a conditioner. So I think I'm just gonna use um, the volumizer spray and I just kind of spritz it on him uh, briefly. And it has a nice uh, scent to it as well. So I'm gonna blow dry him. I'm gonna blow dry him with my dryer. Now, if you have a nice uh, high velocity dryer, that's the best thing for your poodle. I have one that I hang here on my wall, right there. And uh, it's a velocity dryer. It, uh, it's a variable, so it can go from high to low and it has a hose. So I don't need to brush at the same time, I just blow him. So I'll just show you briefly of how I dry my dogs. Now before I dry my dogs, especially with the high velocity, as it can be pretty loud, I make sure I put cotton in their ear and sometimes I put a snoot around them just for extra ear protection because it is loud and the dog has to stand there and listen to it. So you want to protect your dog's ears and you want to protect your own ears as well so you can put cotton in your ears. So that's how I use my high velocity dryer. But if you want to use your own dryer at home, you know, a handheld dryer, it's, it's pretty simple to use. Now this one is a dog dryer and it does come with the stand that you put here and you can, um, you know, make it go higher or lower. I don't have the stand handy, but it is one. I can put the link down below if you're interested. It's a, you can use it hands-free. 
basically you can probably use it for the legs and under the belly and whatnot and then you don't need to hold it but you can use any higher hair dryer at home just put it on low you don't want to put it on hot so I'm just going to show you just turn it on and you want to get your brush and basically you're just going to brush the areas where the air is coming out and this is how you get your dog's hair really fluffy by brushing and blow drying at the same time. Now you might need someone else's help if your dog is moving around all over, but uh, basically this is how you would do it. And it will come out really nice. You know, if you let your dog air dry, it'll just dry curly. It won't look nice and flush and fluffy. Um, you can brush your dog before, um, if you're gonna let your dog like run around and dry, you can give them a good brushing first, and then once your dog is dry, you can brush it again. It might look fluffy for a day or two, but the secret is to brush the hair, dry it at the same time, because it'll stay fluffy for a lot longer. Because you want to just straighten out that hair, right? So you can use your own hand dryer or this doggy dryer, which I'm going to put the link down below in the description. So go check out all my links and I'll put other videos down there that um, you can watch as well. All right, so I just want to show you that as well. There we go. There he's all clean, brushed out and combed out. So make sure you brush and comb your poodle or your dog thoroughly. You want to finish with the comb. Always check it with the comb. If it goes through the coat, then you know that there's no knots. So the comb is just to check for any uh, tangles or knots or any tight areas. The comb should be able to go through the whole coat. If not, that means the coat is all tangled. So go check out my links down below and that way you can get an idea of what you need to groom your poodle. So I wanna thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.